If you feel stuck playing the same pentatonic blues licks over and over, and you feel that your blues solos are, are the same all the time, no matter what you try, and you've looked at new scales, you've looked at new techniques, even new gear, and you don't know what to do, well, I'm gonna fix that for you really quick. By the end of this video, I guarantee it, your blues solos are gonna be much, much better, and it's not what you think. <laughs> Let's get started. Hello, my name is David. Before we get started with this video, I would like to invite you to attend a free on-demand blues workshop. It's available right now. You watch it whenever you want and it's completely free. And it's gonna help you not only solidify what we're about to talk today, but also come up with new ideas. New ideas that I have not shared anywhere else. And it's completely free. Check it out, the link is below. It's an on-demand blues workshop. Again, sign up. Watch it and enjoy the benefits. Okay, we are gonna talk about that one thing that really makes a huge difference in your solos and, and nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it because as teachers, oftentimes we get so focused on, on the instrument that you forget about, about the most important aspect of music. Music is a language and oftentimes music teachers will teach the language of music by looking at important aspects of language, the vocabulary, that's the licks you, you play, the, the way you pronounce words, the way that you execute those words, that's the technique, the grammar, that's the theory, all those things are good, but there's the component of confidence that is often missed. Now, it's really important that uh, we make the distinction between confidence, which is good, and arrogance, which is not good. You wanna throw the arrogance out. Arrogance is thinking that what you're playing is better than someone else. That's not what it is. I'm talking about confidence, confidently playing what you're playing, whether it's good or bad, play it with confidence, boldness. That's what we'll work on today. Here's my backing track. It's a blues and G. I'm gonna use a simple thing here. Remember that uh, language can be very easy, right? We don't need all the all the clutter of language. So I'm gonna use uh, a G Dorian and I'm gonna sparkle a little bit of whole tone scale in there. And then eventually I will, I will highlight the notes of the arpeggios. Now when I say arpeggios, I'm thinking substitution of these arpeggios because if we don't, I'm just messing with you, we're gonna use the G minor pentatonic scale. All right, here is my first position of a G minor pentatonic scale. We all know that scale and we're gonna extract from it a lick. Very simple lick, maybe something like this. All right, just three notes. Those notes right here. That lick is a word, a word that is extracted from an alphabet, a lick that is extracted from a scale. We only have a few notes here, a very simple word. That word can have different flavors depending on how it's said, just like in real language. I can give you the sentence, I went to the office this morning, and there's a hint of excitement in there. I went to the office this morning, but I can also say it this way, I went to the office this morning. A little bit of frustration. All of those things are added by my delivery my rhythm flow, my intonation, but it's the same exact words. And the same thing can be done in music and that is the key that is gonna allow us to focus on that confidence. Okay, for this, I'm gonna give you a few scenarios. 
let's say that word that we just played without the backing track for now. And we're gonna say it as if we just woke up in the middle of the night, kind of confused because we had a weird dream. Let's give it a try. Maybe it wasn't perfect, but that's what I was going for because I remember I just woke up from a weird dream. So I added some vibratos to kind of replicate the, the voice that hasn't worked for a while. You know, my, my voice waking up from a dream. What was that? Um, kind of like a, a floaty thing with the vibrato because, um, because I'm in the middle of the night, I'm still maybe half dreaming. Like those things that are, that are born from your, your understanding of the scenario need to be replicated in there. And by doing this, you're no longer you. I'm no longer David playing this, but I'm, um, I don't know, uh, Bill who woke up, who woke up, woke up from uh, a bad dream. And anyways, you're an actor. So that frees yourself from the anxiety of sometimes being yourself. Let's try another scenario. This time, I'm going to put myself in the shoes of a 13-year-old uh, schoolgirl that um, is first of class and a uh, very kind of arrogant way of speaking. And, um, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know. Let's try that. I don't know. That's what came out. So I was trying to go for, you know, uh, following the rules, yet arrogant. So arrogant in the way of speaking as in, um, uh, I did my homework today. I'm the best, best ever. See, it's kind of like pointy to the point, And so that's what I was trying to go for. That kind of thing. Let's try one more and then we're gonna apply that to our backing track. Okay, this time I'm a little mouse. I saw a little piece of cheese fall under the table. I wanna sneak by the feet of the people who are still eating and, and steal the cheese. So I gotta be discreet, but I still have to say the word. Um, you know what, I'm gonna use my neck pickup. I'm a little mouse. Maybe. That's what came out. Uh, the point is you are able to say a word, to play a lick in a lot of different ways. And by putting these different hats on, you have complete freedom to play a part. You are someone else. Therefore, all the anxiety that you could have, you know, we all have our insecurities are kind of gone. And that's kind of the filter I want you to have when we're working on this confidence thing. Eventually it'll graduate to something else, but for now we're gonna use our backing track and, and see what happens. Again, I'm gonna keep it simple, G minor pentatonic, and I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna start with uh, the guy who just woke up from her dream, a bad dream, middle of the night. Let's try that. Hmm. I'm waking up a little bit here, so I'm gonna repeat that and, and try to try to think about that dream that I just had. Now I'm realizing that, oh, that is, that is just a dream. I'm back to my old self. I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a, a 13 year old schoolgirl. different from the, the dreamy state of mind. Now I'm a schoolgirl. And I woke up and my mom made me eggs and I don't like these eggs. I wanted uh, honey puffs. You know what? My mom's not giving me honey puffs, so... So I'm gonna become a little mouse and sneak in the cabinet and seal the, the honey puffs. She didn't see me. I'm close to the box. I'm opening it. Oh no, she saw me. Oh, mom, I, 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 want, I want these. I'm 
are throwing a fit now. And, and so forth. Anyways, you can go kind of uh, crazy in there. Oh, thankfully, nobody sees what's in your mind when you're practicing this. But this really, really help. And you will see that eventually, by uh, putting on these different hats on, you will free yourself from taking the ideas you already have, the licks you already have, and, and transform them into something new. Because again, a word is just a starting point. All the nuances you can add to a word, a lick, a musical idea are found within the, the character of the person playing that. And ultimately, even though we use these different scenarios, the, the real hero of the story is you. You are the storyteller. This really does help. And just as a side note, another excellent way of working on this is to unplug from your amp and just use your guitar, you know, unplug, completely unplug, because now you no longer have the, the tone here, the, you just have the, the strings, and it's easier when you do this, when you put the different hats on, to think outside the box. How can I play this idea as, I don't know, a businessman from the 50s who is knocking on a door to try to sell, I don't know, what did they sell in the 50s? I don't know, to sell a, a vacuum cleaner. I don't know, I, I, I have no idea how we'd play that. Uh, give it a try. <laughs> but anyways, that's really, really helpful. Give that a try, I promise it'll make a massive difference in your playing. And I hope to meet you here in my free online blues workshop. It's on demand, which means that it's available anytime. Just click on it, sign up, it's completely free. And in it, I'm gonna share some things that I have not shared with anyone before. Check it out, thanks for watching this. Practice well. I'm really not a little schoolgirl. Well. <laughs>